when an Iranian ex-Hezbollah shows up in Israel, everyone wants to know why I'm here. You were born in Iran. Correct. You were a Hezbollah fighter for three years. Correct. I was on my way to United States to convert Christians into Islam. And um, I had 30 illegal passports at that time. I was arrested, uh, put in jail in Malaysia. I was a uh, dedicated Muslim. Not only prayed the prayers, but I read the Quran once every 10 days, cover to cover. So I was very dedicated. In my time in jail, uh, one day as I'm praying, a man appears in front of me, normal size, but his being shines like light. And this light was not a normal light. This light carried identity in it. You knew that he is holy and he is just. And instantaneous, I knew I am not. Even though I had prayed so many prayers, even though I had fasted so much and I had read the Quran and I had volunteered to walk on landmines or I had participated in hanging people trying to please Allah, I knew even though I have kept all the rules and regulation of Islam, I knew I'm not just and I'm not holy. And I knew the only just thing for him to do is to kill me. But I didn't want to die. So I ran to the corner of the room, literally held my head in my arms and just cried out shouting, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And I didn't think he will forgive me because he is just till I felt a touch on my left shoulder. And he said, I forgive you. And I felt a weight just lifted off me. And I, I, I knew I'm forgiven, but I don't know how. And I was confused. I was like, okay, I don't understand. Only God can forgive you. Just forgive me. You are God but you are a different God than the one I have studied about. This is not Allah. So who are you that forgives me and I feel forgiven today? And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I thought that's very powerful. It means a lot because as a Muslim, you pray, show me the straight path kind of thing. And so the way is a direction, truth is something you measure, life is a source, but he claims to be all those three. I never thought the way is a person, the truth is a person, and life is a person, and all of them is the same person. So I said, I don't understand. What is your name? I said, Jesus Christ. And someone grabbed all my bones out of my body, I just fell like a piece of meat to the ground, and I just began to weep. What changed after that? It's like, you know, being colorblind. And then suddenly you see colors again. And you realize the world is so much more beautiful than you ever thought. If you ask me what made the world so colorless, it's the hatred, the anger that is in the heart of every Muslim. I mean, I, people say, why did you hate the Jews? I had never met a Jew. But I thought Hitler was a good man for doing what he did. He just didn't finish the job. I don't know why I hated them. No Jew had ever done anything bad to me. God didn't design us to hate, didn't design us to want to see someone dead. He did not design us for these things. These are design of Satan. How do you think killing the people that God gave them this land to is going to please Allah? The God of heaven, the God of Abraham and Moses, the God of their prophets and Jesus is not a God that celebrates when Jews are killed.
In early October, Efshin was visiting Israel with his ministry, which promotes friendship between Persians and Jews. But like millions of others, he found himself in the middle of a war when Hamas launched a bloody attack. When Afshin visited the CBN News Bureau, he met another guest, Sasha Ariev, whose teenage sister had been kidnapped by Hamas. He and his wife wept as they watched her story. There is absolutely no justification, no explanation that can make any of these okay. Nobody should celebrate when one of the sons of Father Abraham is killing another. And I just want to say, I'm sorry that your family is going through this. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure that a lot of Muslims around the world, they do not want this to happen. Off camera, Efshin and his wife prayed for Sasha and invited her to visit them for dinner. Her reply, I'd be happy to come and bring my sister with me. We are standing with, uh, with, with uh, all the Jewish people, with the people of Israel, and we are, we are mourning their sorrow of their family members that have been lost, but also for the right of Israel to exist. At the end of our interview, Afshin offered a prayer for those on both sides of the war in Israel. You love the world, the whole world, all the people of the world so much that you sacrificed Jesus Christ so that we will not perish but have eternal life. I pray today that the revelation of Jesus Christ would go forth amongst the Muslims and the sons of Ishmael. I pray that you would remember that covenant with Ishmael, that you would go forth because Ishmael is thirsty for the revelation of love, for the revelation of Jesus Christ, for the revelation of salvation. Father, I pray that there would be a hand of protection that would protect Isaac on every front not only in Israel, but all around the world. Give us visions, dreams, wisdom to speak peace in this war. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. May we all echo that prayer, and may we echo the prayer of Abraham over Ishmael. May Ishmael ever stand before you. May there be dreams, may there be visions, may there be an impartation of his love and forgiveness to a hurting Muslim world. If you're wondering what happened to uh, him can happen to you, here's a wonderful promise. Jesus says, I will manifest myself. He showed up for him. And in that showing up, he showed that he's the Alpha the Omega, that he dwells outside of time and space. He is the eternal one, and he has the power to forgive sins. He forgave a member of Hezbollah, transformed him from hatred into love, and he can do that for you. You can have the prophecy of Moses fulfilled over you, that God has become our salvation. God has become your salvation. All you have to do is ask for it. It's a very simple prayer, but when you pray it with all of your heart, God promises that you'll find him. Here's the prayer. Jesus, if you're real, if you really are the Savior, if you can really save me, if you can really forgive me, could you show up? Could you show up for me? Because I need you now. If you pray that with all of your heart, he'll answer. If you need help with that prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is call us, 